the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. In the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. In the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. In the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. J's on my feet. J's on my feet. J's on my feet. So get like me. J's on my feet. J's on my feet. J's on my feet. So get like me. I be in the club, standing on the couch, in the morph grays. Like it's my house, drinking out the bottle. I got no respect, looking like a model. Who just got a check? I back it up, cause I don't give a fuck. If you a lame, that's a shame, you can't hang with us. I'm MC Hammerfly, you can't touch. Jay's so fly, I should work your flight club. Put on my J's and dance the whole night away. I'm not even nature like a hip hop array. My hands in the sky, I'll wave them from side to side. My feet on the floor, I'm about to turn up now. I'm up in the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. In the club, high on perk with some shades on. Tatted up, mini skirt with my J's on. J's on my feet, J's on my feet, J's on my feet. So get like me. J's on my feet, J's on my feet, J's on my feet. So get like me. I be rocking J's, sir. I be rocking Taylor's. I got lots of flavors. My kick game is major. More kicks than the players. Call me up, I'm scoring. Hit it like a free throw. Talk out like I'm Jordan. Miley, Miley, come swing the thing right by me. Got a joint if you want to get stoned. Got choppers if they want to try me. Pro athlete, I'm not no wannabe. Wait, you say so many bottles. I said 23. Did I do it here? Did I do it here? So today is day 23. Like that Miley 23 song. I need to do that one again. That one's fun. That's one of my favorite Miley songs. 23. I I like doing that one. We, we do singing scopes once in a while. We haven't done that in a while, but we'll do that again one of these days. Um, we did that on our other channel more. We haven't done it on this channel yet. We also have the Jedi Joe Rich Show channel and the Naked Jedi here on Periscope. So today is day 23 of the uh, Vegas shutdown. Uh, we are now halfway through, over half. Um, I think we have 22 days left, right, Jared? So 21. 21. 21 days left, that's right. 21 days left. So um, as long as Governor Sislek does not tack on some more days, which I heard he has been shutting down more things. He shut down some golf courses. Uh, what was the other thing he shut down? Oh, uh, everything. Just everything. He's just... Yeah, just like the oh, the, the churches. The, the churches was the big thing. I guess he's allowing the cops to go in and arrest pastors that are a whole... Well, here's the uh, big deal. We were talking about, like, like that Dr. Drew had said... You No, know, no, I'm going to get into that. Oh, okay, I didn't know. No, 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 I'm going to get into that. Oh. Never mind, um, excuse me. Yeah. Um, so... You're, you're asking me questions, so I didn't Okay, know. no, I was just talking about the uh, Governor Sislik, because you were talking to me yeah, about that earlier today. But no, Governor Sislik has been... <laughs> They're now arresting like pastors if they're holding congregations and stuff uh, because you know you can't meet with more than ten people, so it's just crazy. But I think it's hilarious that part of it because uh, you know I'm not religious, so that just makes me laugh. <laughs> if they're arrested, <laughs> anyways. That I grew up um, in the church. My mom was a youth pastor, and my parents went to Bible college and everything. So um, I just think it's funny people get so ridiculous about having to go to church that going to break the law. <laughs> to meet for church, whatever. But um, Governor Sislik, I, I think, is doing this all for uh, political gain at this point because here's what's going on, you guys. The new numbers are coming in, and uh, we've already went over the peak 
of the worst part of the virus. And we now have reached uh, 15,000 in uh, the United States. And you go, oh, that number seems to be growing. But no, we've reached the peak. And Dr. Drew, back in the beginning of this, said that this virus will probably not kill more than 20,000 in the U.S., which is way less than the normal flu virus, which normally kills 50,000. This is what he had said in the beginning. This was not a big deal. And now he's reneged on that because I'm sure they make him. But anyways, because you guys, this is all political now. Because this virus, here's the thing. They're blowing it out of proportion. It's only killed 15,000. And guess what else? It hasn't even validly killed 15,000. They are using, they're twisting the numbers. So if anyone gets the virus and then they die, they're counting that, even if they're not dying from the virus. So let's say you got the virus and you tested positive and then you died from something else because you were old. They're counting that as a coronavirus ev- uh, death even if, like, they got better from it. But just if they've ever tested and then they're, they're dying within this time, they're counting all of those deaths as the 15,000. So they are trying to make this a hysteria thing. And the numbers are not lining up. The normal flu kills 50,000 people a year in the U.S. This one has already peaked, and it's only killed 15,000. And we've stopped the entire world. And same with worldwide. The numbers are way less. The normal flu virus kills 650,000 people a year. This one has killed, I don't remember the numbers, but... Someone asked, so are you saying that they're lying? uh, Yes, they are lying. If you really believe the government tells you the truth, you are out of your mind. The government lies to the people all the time. Um... And the politicians are the biggest liars, and they will do anything to do what they want to do, if that makes sense. Like, they will trample over anyone to get what they want. And what they want is the Democrats want to take down Trump um, because he's becoming so powerful right now. Um, Like I said, if that other judge passes away, then he can become really, really powerful, and he could actually become a dictator. You know, he's learning from the dictators. He's best of friends with Vladimir Putin, and then he was hanging out with Kim Jong-un and, you know, learning from these dictators, and I'm sure that they taught him some of the tricks of how you make your country turn from a democracy into a communist country or have a dictator, and um, Vladimir Putin just became president for life of Russia. So uh, Trump wanted to do the same thing. He was talking about that. He was actually saying he wanted to change the rules where you can only be president for two terms. And um, so people were scared. So someone's saying, are they lying in order to take down Trump? Yes, they're lying because the Democrats, there's always a virus every year, you guys. And there's always a huge virus scare during elections if you haven't noticed that those not not that every election has a virus scare but that's when the big ones come up like SARS was during an election year all of these big hysteria ones are always during election years I don't know how they exactly leverage themselves but this time around I know that it has to do with um, the Democrats want to destroy the economy because Trump was boasting about a really good economy and we had the stock market was like at an all-time high um, uh, it was like at 30,000 and then now it went down and it's coming back up, but, um, you know, it's really rocky right now. So, and the economy is in the toilet, um, for, you know, the average person, we're going to have so much, um, so many people unemployed once this is over. So that is what the Democrats wanted because they are willing to do anything. They tried to impeach him. They couldn't impeach him. They tried to put up every candidate they can think of to go against him. Everyone is like not satisfying the public as far as the Democrats. I heard Bernie Sanders just went out because he's just not getting enough um, support. Um, and all of the Democrats that I've shown, I haven't been following that much this year because I just can't stand it. So someone was asking, uh, who was SARS trying to keep out of office? It was, the, it was with when Obama was trying to run for office. When Obama was trying to run for office. See, you guys, you can... The politics go either way because it's all the same people. So depending on who is trying to get who out of office, whether it be a Republican trying to get the Democrats, the Democrats trying to get the Republicans, the same people, they play the same games. Okay? And we know that there's been so many times that people have cheated for the elections. Uh, we know that Trump uh, cheated. We know that uh, Bush cheated. Um, 
We know those ones for sure, and I'm sure there's been plenty more along the way. Um, I don't know if you guys remember all that stuff back in the day with Nader and Bush and all that, and all the rigged elections and stuff, and then the whole Trump rigged election stuff. So things are always occurring every time there's an election. And there's a lot of different ways that they can try to sabotage the competitors. And one of them is a virus scare because we have a virus every year. So all they have to do is exaggerate the normal virus that we have every year. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not that there's a more intense virus when there's an election. It's that they exaggerate the current virus when there's an election. So that's why we hear about the virus. You don't even hear about the flu barely on other times. You know, like where was the flu last year? We barely heard about it, even though it killed 50,000 people. But we didn't even hear about it. But now, this year, 2020, during an election year again, we're hearing about this crazy COVID virus that has killed 15,000 people, which is less than a normal flu virus. And we've shut down the whole world. Um, but actually, the rest of the world parts are already starting to just go back to normal. Like China, they're going back to normal. It's They don't even, anything, they were part of this whole hoax. Oh, to man. did you see that? Did you, oh, that's a good point. Uh, on the, uh, on the, um, <laughs> Wuhan came back to normal, it's back to normal now. They just mm-hmm. released it. And they did a light show on their buildings that made Vegas look like, well, I don't want to insult any cities, but. But, I mean, it was just like, yeah, like, like, whoa, these guys, like, the whole yeah, city, like, and they had this LED show. Well, and here's the thing. So, Trump put that tax on China, you know, the, the extra tax on all imports from China. So, everything from China just got more expensive, which we buy everything from China. We think, oh, American-made. American-made products buy the supplies from China to make their American-made products. So, um, you guys thought that the Chinese wouldn't retaliate? In some way. So what happened, this is my theory, that the Chinese did this. Uh, They created the hysteria, and they knew that the Democrats would jump on it because everyone is trying to take down Trump. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like everyone hates Trump right now as far as, like, uh, China and the Democrats. So it's very easy to fool the public, especially with social media. They can put whatever they want and have it be the top news. It can get promoted, um, all the... News channels, they just promote whatever they want. You know, I don't know if you guys have watched um, any of these shows recently. Like, um, there was this one uh, show, Nathan Fielder. He did, I forget what the show was called, but there's been a lot of shows recently, like these um, comedy shows, where they have shown that they tricked the news by just making a ridiculous story, putting it on social media. And the news channels don't investigate at all, and they will just run with any story that becomes uh, popular on social media. I mean, the reporters do not investigate anymore. They don't look into anything. They promote whatever they're supposed to promote for their channel or whatever is the popular thing on social media. I mean, they literally find out what to talk about from social media, and they don't even check to make sure it's legit most of the time. And there's, these, there's been shows that will show that they had a story that they completely made up. They got it, you know, to go viral. The news took it off. They showed it. And, I mean, Nathan Fielder showed an example where they did that. And I was like, I mean, the, the news is becoming a joke, an absolute joke. And if you guys that still work for the news and if you call yourself journalists, you need to look in the mirror and reevaluate your life because you are not journalists anymore. You have just, literally, you are the biggest sellouts if you work for these channels because you cannot tell me that you are reporting anything that you feel about. You are reporting what you're told from your bosses. You'd never give your opinion. You would lose your job. So that's not being a true journalist anymore. So what people are saying is they need to understand... They're saying, well, why are so many people dying? So many people are not dying. Well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That, do you not understand? The normal flu <laughs> every year kills 50,000 people in the U.S. This one has only killed 15, and those numbers are being exaggerated by if anyone even got the virus and they die from something else, they're counting it as a coronavirus death. So the numbers are even lower because they want the numbers to be higher. Are you guys not understanding? This is a virus. There's a real virus. There is a real virus, but there is a real virus every year. 
all you have to do is exaggerate the real virus that comes through every year whenever it's convenient for you. So be it an election year, whatever you want, you can exaggerate. You can exaggerate any news thing. You can exaggerate 9-11. You can exaggerate anything. 9-11 was pretty extreme, but you can still exaggerate them. You know what I mean? Why did we go after Afghanistan after we were at 9-11? Because we exaggerated that it was these guys when it was someone else that attacked us in the first place. So the government will use anything to be a catapult to do their agenda. Just like I'm saying with 9-11. We were attacked, but then why do we go into Afghanistan? That has nothing to do with it. The planes that attacked us, we just use that as as opportunity to then go at war for oil. Because Bush, his family is all in the oil business. If you guys don't know that, you need to do some history research. But um, if you really believe the government has your best interest, you really need to wake up. Because they do not. The, everyone in uh, politics at the high ups are, like, close to billionaires. <laughs> They're millionaires, if not billionaires. They do not care about the average person. They will say they do, because that makes them look good for their campaigns. But Hillary, Trump, um, all of them, I think Obama's probably the one that cares the most. He just seems to be the most genuine guy. But even him, I mean, when you're making the kind of money these people do, and they just the kind of lifestyles they have, they do not care about the small people. They don't care if 15,000 people die in the U.S. They don't care if 100,000 people die. If it gets their agenda through, now they'll act like it's a big deal, and they'll say, oh, my gosh, oh, and, they'll, and we'll mourn for the people, and we'll do these tributes, and we'll do all this stuff. But they could give two fucks about any of our lives. That's why they send... 18-year-olds to war for no reason. I joined the military at 17 years old, and I was going to give my life for our country after 9-11 because I was tricked into thinking that, I, that that meant something. But why we went into Afghanistan that had nothing to do with 9-11? And I'm mad because I was one of those people. I was in the military in 2002, right after 9-11. I graduated high school a year early to go into the military because what happened it was so impactful to me. It happened when I was in high school, the, watching those planes. I watched it in the morning. My mom had the TV on when it was live because she always had the news on. It was live. She's like, oh, my gosh, like a plane just went in there. And we're watching, oh, my gosh, another plane. We didn't even know. We thought it was an accident at first, you know. And then they used that. To then put us in a war for the next 20 years. When wars that don't even make any sense with what happened. Um, so, if you think your government cares about individual lives, you're out of your mind. I, I went in the military at 17 years old and they're willing to throw away 17 year olds lives for just to get cheaper oil basically. Most of these wars are just to get things cheaper for themselves or to make little deals, you know, where, you know, you rub my back, I'll rub yours, and, oh, who cares if we lose some people in the process, you know, because all of these people meet, too, you know, all these countries, these, they're all, if you see, Vladimir Putin has met with every president that, that you know, from the time he's been alive and they've been alive, you know, if you look... Clinton, Bush, Obama, all of them. They've all met with Vladimir Putin like a million times. I mean, these guys, if you think all these people are not friends, you're out of your mind. So all they do is they play their little games, and we are their little pawns of, oh, lose some people here, lose some people here, but hey, we made this good trade. So your government does not care about your well-being. Also, the government has also made food really bad right now. And they're not telling people, and they Sometimes actually will squat. Did you get trained in the military? What? Did you get trained in the military? Did I get trained? Yeah. I was actually um, a flyer. 
on the AWACS plane, which is our airborne warning and control system. It's our surveillance plane. So my job was to track um, the enemy and friendly uh, planes to identify them and then tell them to the fighter pilots so that they could shoot down the enemy uh, planes. So I would figure out which ones were good and bad guys. And um, then we'd sur survey that to the fighter pilots. So we talked directly to the fighter pilots and stuff. So it was very intense and a lot of fun. But very crazy. But I went through survival school and everything um, where they uh, put you in a prisoner of war camp. And you go, you spend like uh, two weeks out in the field and then they capture you. And then you go through a prisoner of war camp training. Um, it's very, very intense. <laughs> Most intense thing I've probably ever done in my life. So I did that. Um, and then I became an instructor because I was in... Uh, <coughs> I was uh, actually so... I actually advanced super fast in the military. Like, I got a senior airman below the zone. O only people know this. If you're in the military, you understand what this means. But it means I ranked uh, faster than any of my peers, and only, like, one person gets selected to d get senior airman below the zone per year. And I got it for my base. Um, and then I also got honor grad in basic training. I was the only one. And um, then I became an instructor within two years, too. So I was, like, advancing really fast in the military um and then my mom killed herself and I had like a year left and um I was gonna re-enlist but my sister wanted me to come home um after my mom died so I went back to California and um because I was in Oklahoma I was stationed in Oklahoma so just, my sister didn't want me to be so far so I decided to get out and I was gonna go into um the reserves um, but then, uh, my sister just really wanted me to come back to California and I guess I could have gone to the reserves in California, but it just kind of all was like, it just kind of all fell apart after my mom died. So I got out, but, um, I, I had a dishonorable discharge and everything. I, I mean, I, I finished my, um, term, my four so years. So you going to go to church on Sunday? Am I going to go? <laughs> yeah. That's real top of my list. No, I actually grew up, uh, Christian. Um, my parents were missionaries. <laughs> We, when I was three, we lived in Mexico because my parents were missionaries. And then I went to China uh, when I was 15 as a missionary in Hong Kong. Um, and my parents were both youth, pa youth pastors. I went to Bible college and all that stuff. So I know all Christian. I know all the books of the Bible. I could recite them right now, like in order. Not like the, all the words. <laughs> Can you imagine if I could recite the whole Bible? Whew. That'd be something. But I know all the all the books of the Bible, you know, in order. And then, um, cause I had to memorize that in school cause I went to a Christian school and we had to memorize Bible verses and shit all the time. So, but I am now, um, I would call myself a Satanist now, um, if anything, but I don't, uh, there's no religion I would associate with. I don't like the concept of religion. I'm all about listening to your feelings and being open and just doing what you feel. Not ever, you know, having rules Jedi, you're to a Jedi. We don't we don't do religion. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what We're Jedi. Satan. Satan is the what, see the only reason why we say why Jedi says that is because people have a bad connotation no, of because, Satan. They, because it has a connotation there. But all that means is that we love Satan. Well the thing is Satan is a term that was came up from the Christians. The what? Jedi identifies the force Pre biblical, they right. just identifying this right. But force here's the is, thing is people satanic. have this weird concept of Satan, they call it satanic. anything yeah. they don't understand is satanic. No, but people have this concept that Satan is like this bad entity, um, because that's what you hear in the Bible or whatever. But you don't even really hear that in the Bible, actually, to the level that people where they want to say blame everything on Satan and stuff. That's not really in the Bible, but um, what it is is Satan is. Everything that's like fun and stuff, and so uh, a lot of people don't like that. Like, like anything, like partying and stuff. They're like, "Oh man, what Satan made me do it." Satan, you're like, "Oh, he Satan made you have fun." Okay, and then they'll, you know, the the reason why certain things in the society are so um, disruptive to your life is not because of the actual thing as much as what society has done. Let me give an example. Like, let's say drugs. So the actual drug is rarely the thing that affects your life the most. It's usually the fact that it's illegal 
and um, and that it's expensive. That affects people more for most drugs. There are some drugs that are pretty extreme, like I would say meth is <laughs> pretty extreme. Just It's just so intense. But I would say, you know, things like coke, um, what affects your life more is that it's illegal and expensive. The actual doing of the coke, you know, whatever, people trip out a bit, but whatever, you get over that. But what affects your life more is that you get legal problems, um, you might go to jail, you know, prison, whatever. Um, and uh, it's very expensive being it's legal. So what's funny is our society makes things that seem satanic worse. We're really, Satan's like, all I did was give you these things from Earth. Like cocaine comes from Earth. Weed comes from Earth. Um, not the man main things. I'm talking about things from Earth. And um, then other things. Okay, alcohol. Well, I don't know if alcohol was ever Satan's thing. Um, that That's, if anything, more... Uh, church thing they give you alcohol when you they used to give you alcohol when you went um, to church so people will relate alcoholism to satan and if anything you should relate that to the church the church started giving wine and bread to people because alcohol um i don't think has anything beneficial to it um some people think that it can calm them down, but it doesn't really. Alcohol, all it does is just depress your emotions. So that's why it calms you down, because you just get depressed. <laughs> so um, it's funny the things that people will... Okay, now sex, they'll say Satan. Well, sex is a wonderful thing. What is bad with sex? That's oh, yeah. a beautiful thing in there. So all these things that people want to <laughs> say, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, Satan. Okay, rock and roll? Well, that's an amazing thing. One thing, the gov here's what the government does. This is the way it works. They have to convince you to be afraid. So they find your fears, and then they convince you that the government will protect you from those fears. Mm -hmm. That's the way throughout history that dictators and everybody's convinced people to do stupid things like shut down the entire city because they're so afraid and they think the government's going to protect you. Right, and they think like the government is always telling the truth about things. For one thing, the government said uh, weed was uh, a, a grade A. Was it grade A they called it? Or yeah, it was like class A felony. The class A. I'm sorry, that's what Class A felony. No, listen. Yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still federally, which is... As we know, weed now is beneficial. We do weed every day here. It's legal in is Las it? Vegas, um, uh, but it's still not legal federally. We'll get this, you guys. They say it's a Class A drug, which is the same as heroin and meth and all these other ones, and they still say it's that. And they, like, made it this horrific thing back in, was it Nixon? Nixon, who, who, mm -hmm. who made it so horrific, whatever. And... Um, if you guys believe these presidents, <laughs> okay, for one thing, uh, George Bush was a big coke addict. I don't know if you guys know that. George W. Bush, is it? And he was a big alcoholic and a coke addict. So if you guys think, then then he's the one putting people saying, uh, and him his dad holding his bag of crack. Ooh, oh God, remember that? Remember that? In the first, uh, like holding his bag, the biggest bag of crack oh, I've ever dude, seen in my whole. Like ten pounds. Ten pounds of crack, while his son's a crackhead. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I wonder where he got that from. Yeah, oh, this is going to ruin the world like my son over here. She, who's going to be a future president. Jeez, if you guys think, you're out of your mind if you think these guys have your best interests. Oh, my gosh. Right, and the thing is, you see, the cool thing about, about America, and this is why everyone is focused on us, is because we allowed the freedom of religion, specifically... Satanism. Mm -hmm. It was a secret society by George Washington and everybody. They called themselves Masons. Yep. That's why where every town you go to, it's a Masonic temple. Yeah. And uh, which Joe, is which is, which uh, is dad and grandpa were Masons, and same with my uh, grandpa was a Mason. Well, yeah, and so the, and, and so were most of the founding fathers of America because these people weren't allowed to practice their religion in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so America is based upon, basically at the core, is a bunch of Satanists that want to practice freedom, like rock and roll, partying, and sex. Yeah, that's all Satanism is, is just being free, like um, being allowed to 
do what you feel, which our society puts a lot of rules on how you feel. Don't do this. Don't do that. Oh, if you feel this, you should do this and do this. And yeah, um, anybody has a book of rules, take that book. And you shove it up you, your ass. Yeah, get, or no, their ass. Yeah, take whoever gave that to you, whatever pastor, rabbi, or whatever you call your Muslim leaders, take that and shove it up their fucking ass. Take and, and wipe and, and take the poop and wipe it wipe their face with it with the pages of their of the poop from the pages <laughs> of the Bible and the Quran, if you could. That's for my Muslim friend there. Yeah. And like I said, you guys, I I've read the Bible. Over and over and over. I had to a ton when I was a kid. We had to read it every year, the whole Bible through. So I know about all this crap. So if you think, um, you want me to say, I'll, I'll say all the books of the Bible right now. Okay. Huh? I was just kidding around. I'm going to say the books of the Bible in case someone doesn't. how I joke around. He jokes it? around. Here, I'll tell you guys the books of the Bible in case you don't understand that I know what I'm talking about. All right. I'll say them right now. Okay. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings, First and Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. And that's the Old Testament. Then we go New Testament goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, first and second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first and second, third John, Jude, and Revelation. If I missed a couple, I don't know. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> I'll do the presents now. I said that yesterday. These are the little things I remember from school, so I remember very few things. <laughs> okay. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, Harrison, Tyler, Polk, Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, Cleveland, McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, Wilson, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Franklin, Roosevelt, Harry, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump. <laughs> there we go. They're my presidents and books of the Bible. So um, the only reason why I say the, uh, the books of the Bible one was because if you guys didn't believe that I actually know the Bible. So when I'm talking about things, I'm not just just making stuff up. I mean, I, I am very educated in the Bible, <laughs> So I understand now uh, being on the other side. Like I said, my parents went to Bible school, too. So they went. They, my dad was the valedictorian and my mom was salutatorian of their Bible college. And it was, you know, a big Bible college in Sacramento, California. And um, so I know more about the Bible than most, I'm telling you. And Satan is not a bad entity, he is actually a super cool guy that always is trying to help people. If anything, he helps artists all the time, and then they say that, like, he was bad to them. Like, oh, Satan made me do this. You're like, no, Satan actually gave you the music, and then you partied, and then you got went to rehab, and then you blamed Satan. <laughs> I mean, that's usually what happens. I mean, what is it that Satan has done to anyone that was so awful? Like, tell me what Satan did that was so awful to someone. Okay, he got kicked out of heaven. Then next, and he has to take care of the underworld. What else has he done? Tell me what he's done that's so awful. And people always say, oh, he made me do this. What? You're just blaming him for any bad decision you make. But anyway, so um, I do uh, call myself a Satanist. Jedi Rich hates when I refer to it that way only because people have such bad connotations. But we're Jedi as in Star Wars, like the Jedi. Um, and that is a real thing, being a Jedi. Uh, people think we're crazy or something or just think it's a joke, but no, you can be a Jedi. I mean, look it up. Um, the things the Jedi are all about, um, you know, caring for the, the world and in a way that is, like, making the biggest 
impact with the smallest footprint in a sense. You know what I mean? Like being a minimalist but having a huge impact on the earth. Um, people think to have a big impact, you need to have lots of money and do all this lavish stuff and do all these things. No, if anything, what you should be doing is helping people and being with the people. And um, that's what Jedi do. And a lot of times it doesn't seem like we're helping people because sometimes we're going at people. But that's because we need to go at those people because they're not listening to their feelings. So there's no right and wrong in a sense. It's just listening to your feelings. If you're listening to your feelings, you will be doing the thing that's right for you. Does that make sense? There's no like, this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. There's no rules. It's what are your feelings saying is right for you, and that's what you need to listen to. And you know the things that you should do and shouldn't do. You know right away that's... Some people would refer to their conscience, uh, your feelings. I call them dead friends. Uh, because everyone that dies, uh, their knowledge is still collective, and you can tap into that. You can talk to them. Um, the dead want to talk to people. No one is talking to them, so they're like, please talk to me. No, it's not like what you guys think. It's not like where you're... People get this concept that, like, you're hearing this audible to where it's just, like, exactly, like, this voice, and then you're seeing things. It's not like that. It's like you're you're getting ideas, and you're getting feelings, and you're sensing things, and I get it a lot from my mom because, um, and it took me a while to realize this, or I was like, oh, and so she helps me a lot with things. But a lot of times I still don't listen because I think it's myself a lot of times. like it, It's confusing because we think all our ideas are our own, so we'll bash them down. But they're not coming from us. They're coming from your dead friends, the collective of knowledge of the universe. Um, so you need to listen to your own thoughts. Like when your feelings say something, and a lot of times your feelings will say things like, stop drinking coffee. And you'll be like, no way, I love coffee. And your feelings are like, that judge has always been telling you coffee is going to make you fat and ultimately make you very sick. And that's what's leading to a lot of health problems. And you'll say, nope, I love my cup of coffee. And all the doctors said it was fine. And da, da, da. See, that's the difference of listening to your feelings or listening to what you were taught. And those are very different because we've been taught a lot of BS um, in society since the time we were born we're told to stop crying shut up and sit still and and don't make a noise and be you know behave I was spanked a lot as a child which was uh more allowed back then um I guess now would probably consider be more abuse you know because I was I was spanked every single day uh I got the belt my mom broke she had this wooden hand she would spank me with this uh, pallywhack for naughty kids. She broke that thing on me because she spanked me so much with that when I was young until I just finally stopped being so strong-willed. She, like, broke it out of me, you know, and then I became a really quiet child. And um, I didn't think anything of it, but now, you know, I think they consider that <laughs> abusive. But um, what happens is kids listen to their feelings. And parents beat them out, beat that out of them in some way or another. It might not be physically, it might be time out. Be quiet, go to your room, don't make so much noise, don't play the music so loud, don't have fun, don't jump. I got always in trouble for uh, jumping. I was into gymnastics and dance, but I wasn't very good when I was young. So I would make a lot of noise when I was practicing, um, you know, trying to do my jumps and doing handstands and cartwheels, and I'd fall over and I get yelled at so much for that, for making noise. Um, uh, it didn't make loud thumps, you know, when you fall. And But we only had, like, a small place, so I just practiced in the house. I couldn't go outside. We were, like, in an apartment. Um, and uh, even when we were house, the apartment, it made sense because the neighbors would complain. But even when we got a house, my stepdad would not let me make any noise. Um, and that's how a lot of families are, you know. They just... Um, are all about it's supposed to be quiet. Why? Why are we supposed to be quiet? I, I don't understand. I remember one time in school, 
I always, you know, I was very respectful in school because, you know, if anything, my parents had beat any kind of, uh, uh, you know, rebellion out of me when I was very young. So I, I was very well behaved in school. And um, my parents were both mi- in the military, so they were very militaristic. I didn't realize that till now. Like, uh, they didn't know they were young, so, but everything was very. You had to be just so. It's probably why it was easy for me to go into the military. But they'd only done like um, two, three years, I think it was, in the army. They each did three years in the army. It used to be a three-year term. Now it's four-year term. But uh, I did the four-year term. But anyways, um, yeah, teachers just are always about telling kids to be quiet and calm down and quiet, and you know. And uh, I remember a teacher one time. She had asked us to quiet down and so we got quieter we were we were doing like some you know it was fun time it was like a story time play time whatever you know sometimes you have that in school so we got quieter and then she said I thought I asked you guys to calm down and I didn't know I was being disrespectful I was like in fourth grade and I was like oh you didn't ask us to calm down you asked us to quiet down and we did quiet down man I got sent to the principal's office I got in so much trouble and I was like to me I said those are different things. I mean, you can be quiet and still be having fun. Um, but why both? Why calm down and why quiet down? Why? Unless there's something going on, like someone is literally sleeping next to you or something. But why do we need to be quiet, especially right now when you're in your house? Why do you need to be quiet? Yeah, neighbors? Well, everyone's home. We ain't doing anything. Why do we got to be quiet? Why can't we just make some noise? So our neighbors complained one day. Because we were making noise. I shut that shit down. <laughs> yeah. Not in the middle of the day are you going to, like, complain if I'm making noise in the middle of the day. I'm allowed to make noise in the middle of the day in my house. Now, there are times that you're not allowed to make noise legally. Like, after 10 p.m. and before 8 a.m., they actually usually have, like, city noise ordinance and ordinances where you can then they can call the cops. In the middle of the day, you were allowed to make noise. I mean, that's when work occurs. That's when they're lawn mowing, you know. It's, even now, all that stuff's still occurring. Landscaping is still essential. Probably because they don't want this t- town to be overrun with weeds. It would just look terrible. So they're allowing landscaping to occur everywhere. But um, during the day, I mean, and why can't your kids make some noise, especially if they're home right now? I mean, if you're telling your kids to be quiet during this, apocalypse and they have nothing to do and they want to be loud and they want to yell and they want to play games and they want to play tag in the house why not let them who cares are you that obsessed with having silence silence is so boring me and i hate silence after a while we don't have very much silence around here only when i'm depressed and um silence is kind of a sign of depression if you really want silent if everything's irritating you're probably depressed if noise irritates you and people having fun irritates you then you're probably depressed that's the other reason why most people tell people to be quiet is because they don't like when other people are having fun i don't know why i don't know why we're that way i don't know why when other people are having fun some people want to knock it down some people are just like the anti-fun police i guess And, and i don't know what their deal is with that But um, seriously, we're in a society where it's so like, be quiet, be quiet. You go, you go in public. Oh my gosh, don't make any noise. Don't, don't talk out loud. You know, don't let someone know you're alive. Don't live. So yeah, our neighbors one day. So next door they have um, three people living there. It's older, older woman like a grandma, uh, a lady like in her forties, and then like this kid like in his twenties. I think the kid is dating, like, the 40-year-old or something. I don't think it's her son. It's weird. I don't know what it is. The story, but um, he plays video games all day long, super-duper loud. And he yells, and he's going nuts about his video games. And then they get mad when we make any noise. So I was like, no. So I went over there. I told him, no. And during the day, we're allowed to make noise. We are allowed to make noise in the middle of the day in our house. We live in close quarters. We're in apartments. If your neighbors are complaining in the middle of the day, you go tell them that is unacceptable, that you are allowed to make noise in the middle of the day and they need to live 
if they're, you know, I mean, even if they sleep, we sleep during the middle of the day. When you are someone that sleeps during the middle of the day, you have to turn on music or something because neighbors are not going to just be quiet because you sleep during the day. And I tend to work at night when we are working, so I do sleep during the day. I put on my music because our neighbors aren't quiet during the day. You know, we got neighbors. Luckily, we're on the top. But we used to live in the middle and get them bouncing on the ceilings and stuff, jumping around. We never complain. So I think it's unacceptable if your neighbors come and complain. Unless, like I said, there's, there's certain times if it's after 10, they do legally are allowed to tell you to be quiet. And then we're always respectful during um, after 10 p.m. To, but in the middle of the day, if I want to play some music, we're not that crazy. People go, because we have the studio, but most of the stuff's occurring through our uh, headphones. They can't hear. So like when we're playing the music, they can't hear that. They can hear me singing a little bit maybe, but they can't hear the actual music because it's all going through the headphones. So it's not very loud. But um, they were just being like ticky-tacky about every noise so I said no and now they haven't said a thing that was like several months ago and uh and sometimes you have to do that I mean people are scared to go to tell your neighbors but you're like no we all live here we all have a right to live and to make noise and to live our lives to not be walking on eggshells because your neighbors don't like if you put your stereo to volume five you know it's ridiculous that you shouldn't be living like that. Or your parents. If your parents are doing that, I hope tell them to watch my scope and they need to allow for some noise because living life makes noise, makes messes. If you live in a house that you're too worried about making a mess, that's not right either because the thing is, I'm a very clean person. I love everything clean. I would love for things to never be messy. But life is messy, so you just have to clean it. But to be, like, so worried that someone might spill or something. I know I had friends. My mom always had a house that was very, like, livable where it didn't matter if you spilled, you know. Nothing was that valuable. But I went to friends' houses that everything was, like, white and, like, oh, my gosh, you were so worried. And everyone was so quiet and, like... I'm like, man, I couldn't live like that. That's just crazy. And at the dinner table, no one talked. They were like, so, man, my mom, we'd get in fights. And <laughs> my sister threw forks at me and stuff and threw a cup across the thing. If she got mad at me, we'd be like, all right, you know, the dinner table and stuff. I have an older sister, and we'd get in a lot of fights. She's like two and a half years older than me. But anyways, um, Jerry Rich went out there. I think I'm going to close up here because I can talk forever. But there kind of just comes a point where you're like, okay, that's a long enough blog. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, was, I keep th- saying I'm going to talk about veganism, and then I never get to it. Joe Rich keeps saying no one's interested in that. But I think it's an interesting topic because so many people are promoting veganism right now. And I'm telling you, it's not a good diet to choose. If you're trying to decide what to do right now and you're considering veganism, don't do it unless you want to gain a lot of weight. If you want to gain weight, choose veganism. And what happens is people think that when you're vegan, you lose weight because a lot of times initially you might because you might change your diet from what it was. And the biggest thing is if you cut out dairy, that will make you lose a lot of weight right away. But what happens with uh, usually when people choose to be vegan, I was vegan for 12 years, so I'm speaking from experience. What happens at first is they generally choose pretty good options like in the sense of like fruits and veggies and beans and nuts and things like that. But pretty soon after being a vegan, they start choosing the other options, like the artificial vegan options, like the artificial meats, the whatever says vegan, um, the Carl's Jr. vegan burger, all of those things. If you think fast food is healthy in any way, you're out of your mind. (laughs) I mean, uh, fast food is not nutritious in any shape or form. Not one fast food restaurant. Mm -mm. unless you're just eating because they don't even use real meat I don't think for most of them if a place has real meat and you just eat the burger then you'll be alright but if you have any of the toppings or fixings or anything like that and I wouldn't even use the the burger because they use such crappy meat that it'd be your worst but if that's your only option just eat the meat and skip everything else but um, you'd be much better going to a grocery store and getting some meat than from um, and cooking it yourself. And it's very easy to cook meat. Uh, people are very nervous about cooking. I didn't cook for, uh, well, I'm 35. I say I didn't cook for years, which would only mean I didn't cook for maybe like, because I was, I left the house at 17. I was in the military. I did, cooked a little bit in the military. Like I cooked one time Thanksgiving 
<laughs> for my friends. But that was it. But then I didn't cook for maybe about... Yeah, about... I started cooking, I think, about three years ago. Yeah, because Jedi Rich cooked in the beginning of our relationship, and we ate out a lot. We did a lot of fast food. I just started cooking three years ago. So I just started cooking at 32 years old, so um, that was pretty late, I guess. And now I love cooking. I cook every single meal. We eat every meal at home. But cooking meat is very, very simple. Um, I just use a cast iron skillet. Um, I tend to not use any oil if I can. What I do is I just oil the pan. The reason why I use a cast iron skillet is because then you don't get any of that the crap that they put, those uh, coatings that they put on the pans. Um, and I always oil down my cast iron skillet. So then the next day, that's the oil that I use to cook with. So I don't add any more. And then, you know, you just cook up whatever the meat is that you're cooking. Most meats take at least 20 minutes to cook. Um, so if you're putting it, making burgers, just put the meat on there. Flip them once in a while. I mean, it's not rock side. Add some seasonings. Um, if you're doing steak, same thing. I mean, there's re- it's really easy to make meat. There, You don't even need recipes. I mean, like I said, most things take about 20 minutes. Chicken, at least cook for 20 minutes. Chicken's the thing you need to make sure you cook all the way through. Um, because you can get sick from raw chicken. Uh, it's easy to tell it's raw, though. You'll see it's really, like, chicken. You can tell when it's raw. It's really pink, and it's really, like, um, a weird consistency and stuff when it's not cooked. You'll see. Um, but, yeah, meat is, like, the easiest thing to cook. So if you're single and you don't know, um, if you don't have a pan, order one on Amazon. Um, I'm telling you, cast irons are the best. A lot of people don't like cast irons. I don't know why. I think they're absolutely amazing. Um, I wash mine every single day. Some people don't wash theirs. I wash mine every day, and then I oil it every day. Actually, I wash it like three times a day. I I wash it after every meal. I don't leave. Some people leave the stuff in their cast iron skillet. I don't do that. I wash mine, and then I oil it after every meal. Um, But meat is going to be your best option. That's why veganism doesn't work. That's the ultimate bottom line because you're best your best protein source will always come from real meat and you say oh what about all these artificial things for one thing if you ever look at the nutrition facts on most of the artificial things the percentage of um protein to sugar is higher than regular meat so like all of the uh artificial options have like really high sugar content and and I mean like carbs too not just straight sugar I mean like carbohydrates to um the protein where meat is pretty much zero carbs actually it is zero carbs <laughs> and then just insane amount of protein and what happens also with the artificial things is your brain treats it as sugar as I've said before um so anything artificial when you're doing those artificial meats your brain doesn't know what it is so it gets all messed up and then it produces more insulin and then you're going to store more fat, and it's just that same vicious process that goes on with the caffeine, same thing, because anything that your brain then needs to produce more insulin. So the thing with artificial is your brain doesn't really know totally what it is. That's why, like, they think there's no calories with artificial sweeteners because you're tricking your brain. But you can only trick your brain so much, and also your brain doesn't like that, and it also um, adjusts. So what happens is maybe for a second it works, but right away your brain starts to figure out what you're doing, and then it goes, oh, I need to produce more insulin because they're taking in all this sugar. It's really sweet. I don't know. It's really sweet. All I know is that it's like sugar. So then it starts producing insulin, and then it tells your body to store fat. So even if it's artificial, even though you don't get the calories, you now have an issue because you're not receiving sugar, but your body thought it was receiving sugar, so it started going through the system of producing insulin and storing fat and all that. But now you didn't even receive sugar, so it, it starts it, it causes even more problems. So artificial sweeteners are even worse than regular sugar. So all of the artificial things, everything artificial, the flavoring, the meats, the sweeteners, anything artificial, your brain gets confused. The best things to consume are things from this earth. That's what your brain knows what they are. So things like animals, 
plants. You know, fruits and veggies and animal protein. Uh, people don't want to eat animals. I know it's tough, especially if you love animals, you know. But know that those animals, for one thing, are happier when they go to the next uh, life. Like a cow doesn't want to just stay here grazing for the rest of his life. A cow wants to move on. So now you don't want the animals to be treated unfairly. That's where I really push for as much as you can. Choose the options that say humane treatment cage-free, pasture-raised, um, organics if you can, no GMOs, no steroids, no hormones. I mean, all these things, no antibiotics. All these things you'll start seeing they're labeling on the packages. The most you can get of the things it doesn't have, so like the best would be organics and no GMOs, but I know that's expensive for some people right now, so if you can't choose that, choose like the best thing that you can see within your budget of the most humane. And it will be a little bit more because the animals are treated more fairly. So what happens is when they have to treat the animals more fairly, which is what we want, it costs more. So they have to have, you know, more room. They can't put them in small spaces like they're doing. So the cheap meat, they're putting animals in small spaces and cages and crap together, and it's not a, a very uh, nice way for the animals to live. And that's why the vegans have... In that way, that's good that they've been uh, educating people on that. That part is really good, and I commend them for that because we don't. No one wants that. But then we have the animals that are raised normally in the way. There's a lot of farms, especially the organic ones, that they treat the animals extremely fairly. They love the animals; those are their pets until they have to, you know, kill them. But they love them, and. Um, that is why organics are more expensive. And the more that people want the organic options or the humane options, the prices will come down because as the masses buy it more, then those farms, you know, can make more and it, it can become less money. But right now, since not very many people want those options, it's more expensive. So, um, now Jenna Rich says, if everyone chose organics, we'd probably run out. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if we would have enough. But fortunately, probably not everyone is going to switch to organics. Not everyone watches my blog. <laughs> so, all of you should. I mean, I know it's expensive, but if you want to feel better, it is the best thing to do to switch to organics. I mean, that would be your best option, even if you did your current diet and made it all organics that would be the best first bet and then from there adjust more things because what I do and these would be your ultimate if you want to be in your best shape and without having to really exercise much I was showing you guys I did some nunchucks but I haven't even done those in like months when I did that yesterday um I need to do it tomorrow I'm starting to get the flab down here because I haven't been doing it you know I'm thin but you know you'll put uh you put fat in spots if you don't, um, you know, keep yourself active. And I was laying around a lot. We don't, we do not uh, go to the gym or anything. But when I got depressed and, you know, you stay thin, I had no problem because of my diet, but you just start to lose, your, you know, some of the tone if you don't if you lay around too much. So um, it's good to just do some home things like nunchucks, do some push-ups if you can. There's a little bit of things, but um, this over-exercising thing is gotten out of hand because what happened is people are overeating and they're compensating by over-exercising. But that's a vicious cycle because really you should just be eating what you need and doing light activity. You shouldn't really be overeating and then having to exercise to compensate because for one thing that's wasteful and... Um, you should always be in the mentality of not wanting to waste, but especially right now when we're in this state, you should realize, well, yeah, I'm kind of, for one thing, causing myself a lot of havoc because all of that is work on your body and it ages you. If you guys don't think about that, think about that. Like if, every time that you're eating like and exercising, it's strain on your body. So like the more you're like, consuming and then burning it off is trained so it ages you versus just eating what you need and doing light exercise that keeps you younger looking so um if you want to stay looking good for many reasons um 
one being to stay looking young, you want to actually be easy on yourself. This idea of like killing yourself at the gym, that's that's only in response to because the food is making people fat, so they feel they need to overexercise. And the food right now is making people fat, and it's not your fault. If you're feeling fat right now, it's not your fault. It's not self-control. It's nothing like that. What happens is when you consume anything with sugar, which is pretty much everything right now, and like I said, all the artificial things, it turns off the sensor in your brain to tell you you're full. So you will continue to eat. And so it's not self-control. It's literally you just never feel full when you're eating sugary substances. Um, so it don't matter. You can tell yourself, I'm only going to eat one more. But you're, the sensor in your brain turned off, so you just continually feel hungry. Even though you've been stuffing your shorts all day long, but you're still feeling hungry because the sensor to tell you you're full turned off. So that's why when you make different choices for food, you'll actually not feel that hunger anymore. And that's what people constantly struggle with. And I did for years because I was bulimic. As a bulimic, you feel hunger 24-7 because you're constantly eating and then throwing up. So you're constantly starving. And that's why when, um, uh, if you know a bulimic, they often will eat really fast and because they're just so hungry every time, even though they probably just ate, but their body is in a constant state of starvation. And I was a bulimic for 15 years, so, um, and I recovered, which is so rare. And I recovered by eating organic, so these are the things I do. All organics, GMO-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, no caffeine, and no alcohol. And also no artificial anything. So the only beverage I consume is water. And sparkling water is my favorite. I love sparkling water. That's like my little treat. (laughs) And when I don't have my sparkling water, I'm like, and it's it's not just for the bubbles. They actually have minerals. So sparkling water is very nice um, because it has good minerals and stuff. So that is all I consume. Spring water and sparkling water for beverages. And most of your uh, weight, a lot of times, is coming from beverages. um, Because beverages are just straight uh what they do is if it's any beverage that has calories or sugar it goes straight into your bloodstream there's no digestive process so it's just straight in your bloodstream that's why you get that instant like rush but then instantly gets stored to fat because there's just there's no um you don't use any of your energy to convert it so all of that it just goes right to fat so beverages are the quickest way to gain weight that's why people are all on these smoothie kicks turn myself and um i did that for a while we did all smoothies for a while we had a nutribullet we did that we've tried it all that's why i'm trying to help you guys because i've tried everything i'm not trying to be like a know-it-all i'm just trying to let you know when i got over when i stopped bulimia well i've tried everything my whole life okay i did vegan and vegetarian then i did bulimia i was anorexic i've, I've done but then when i stopped bulimia i scoured the internet and tried everything we did atkins we did all smoothies uh we did um all just like fruit and nuts uh, like a, a vegan vegetarian thing uh we did all raw we did um uh, different versions of atkins where we did with the bars which is a bad idea once you start doing those like protein bars those are all artificial you guys those artificial things like those bars those will make you gain so much weight. Any of those bars, any of those balance bars, any of those, any of you're eating those bars, it's artificial. So your brain's going to treat it all as sugar. So even if they're saying, oh, you get this much protein, but you're just going to treat it as sugar. It's going to be bad. So those, throw those out the window if you can. But um, I, what happened is when I first stopped my bulimia, I bloated. Um, there's this thing called candida overgrowth. I don't know if you guys knew about this. Um, and it's a it's a yeast fungus, which most people have, and they're just unaware, um, because we get it from caffeine, from sugary uh, diets, um, from antibiotics, uh, from lots of different things. If if you've ever, as a woman, had a yeast infection, then you have candida. Um, if you've ever had a toe fungus, then you have candida. If you ever had any kind of fungus like that, then you have candida. Um, well, we all have candida, sorry. 
candida overgrowth is what I'm trying to say. We all have candida in our body. But candida overgrowth is what I'm trying to say. If, you ha- if you're showing things like the, f- the athlete's foot and stuff is candida overgrowth. So what candida overgrowth is, is you have too much of these uh, yeast. They've um, taken over. And what happens is um, the yeast live on sugar. And they live, are stored in your fat cells. But they love sugar. So when you have candida, it also intensifies your cravings. Because these candida yeast want more sugar. Um, and what they do is uh, they cause bloating is the big thing that you'll notice. Um, when you really have an overgrowth problem. And that's what you get from bulimia. And so when girls try to uh, recover from bulimia, the first thing they notice is they bloat. And I don't mean like a little bit of bloating. I mean like where you're nine months pregnant, where your stomach feels like it's gonna burst, bloating, it's so uncomfortable. That's why a lot of bulimics don't recover because once you go through that phase, you say, forget it, I can't go through it. And it's tough. And I, I was sick for a year straight. I could barely, I would, Get up in the mornings, but as soon as I ate, I was in bed because it was so. I, if I ate anything, I had to go and lie down for the rest of the day because I would bloat for the whole day, and I'd have to. Um, it was it was really bad. This was uh, the first year, and it was because of the candida overgrowth, and um, I was the extreme. But most people have it. And what happens with candida overgrowth? It causes a lot of problems. It causes uh, sinus problems a low sex drive, depression, um, uh, a lot of skin um, things. Uh, There's some different skin irritations that you get, um, yeast infections, um, toe fungus, all kinds of things. You should look look up candida overgrowth. And a lot of times that's what people are struggling with. And the way you get over how you minimize it, you'll never, you never get rid of them because they're always in your body but how you get rid of the overgrowth problem is you have to eat a diet like mine where you are just eating um animal protein basically uh i choose to eat beef that's my favorite um i have my reasons for why i think beef is the best you guys might choose a different protein but definitely animal protein because you have to get rid of all the sugar and um they live in your fat cells so you got to Get the fat off of you and uh, not keep feeding them sugar. And then they start to die off. But um, a lot of people have these issues without even realizing because they're just going about their normal day and they're drinking so much caffeine that it's kind of minimizing their symptoms in the sense that they don't realize they're depressed. They don't realize they're tired. What? That's the really big thing is lethargy that you feel with candida overgrowth. Um, just extreme tiredness. So um, they just think, oh, I'll just drink more caffeine and stuff. And so they're not even realizing that they're having these symptoms um, of other things. So a lot of people are struggling with that. And the, the biggest thing that causes candida overgrowth is a high sugar diet. So if you're eating high, if you are overweight, like really overweight, you probably suffer from candida overgrowth. And that's probably what's just causing you so much issues. I mean, it's it's a nightmare. It's not fun, um, but it can get better. And I'm feeling like almost 100% now, but it, it's taken a while um, because I did so much damage. But I was talking about this the other day was um, what happens when you're unhealthy is especially when you get injured while you're unhealthy. So like I was bulimic for 15 years, so I had a lot of injuries that occurred during that time. Well, when your body goes to heal, it heals improperly because it doesn't have the right nutrition to heal. And so a lot of things that occur are uh, bone spurs. Um, And you can get those. um, Have you ever noticed some women get those really bony chests? I don't know if you've ever seen where it's like sticking out. I have it a little bit. It's getting better. Um, But like Ariana Grande has it. um, And I know she's bulimic. But what that is, she thinks that it looks good because they think, oh, I have this bony chest. Look how thin I am. But that's not, it is bone, but what it is is like bone on top of bone. Because what's happening is your body is not healing properly. So you're, 
damaging things, especially, you know, when you're bulimic, you're damaging stuff in right underneath and here, you know, in your uh, whatever is in your throat, your uh, adrenal glands, your um, thyroid, all this stuff. Um, you're really damaging a lot of the stuff here. So as your body tries to heal, it grows bone on top of bone. So it puts calcium deposits, but it's literally like trying to heal bone with bone. <laughs> but what happens is the bone grows on top of your nerves. And so it really hurts. It really, really hurts. And that's what can become um, debilitating. And I had it so bad in my chest um, that I couldn't breathe. It was starting to put so much pressure. And that's when I finally had to stop being bulimic because I couldn't breathe anymore. I couldn't, if I walked up the stairs, I wouldn't be able to breathe. Like, Jarvis would have to help me. We lived on a third story then, and um, he had to help me up the stairs. And then once I got upstairs, I had to lay down for about an hour before I could do anything. I'd be so out of breath uh, just from walking up our stairs. And uh, I was trying to, act like it wasn't bulimia. I wanted it to be something else. Like, I went to the doctor, and they said I was going to die. They didn't even know it was bulimic. They were like, you're going to die. Your vitals are, like, lethal. You need to come back. Because I got a test, and they called me to come back, and I just didn't even want to go back. They said, you need to come back. Your your All of your vitals are at lethal levels because I had just been messing up my body for so long. One of the big things is potassium that gets really low. And potassium will, like, regulates your water and everything. So I've had to have potassium injections when I was bulimic which take like eight hours and they put it in your veins and it's super painful but um all those things I still continue to be bulimic for all these years you know and until finally when I couldn't walk up the stairs was when Jabridge was like all right you, we have to find a solution because you're gonna die and that was three years ago and um maybe four years ago now yeah, I think it was like 2015 is when I first kind of started the process, and then I struggled the first year. I kind of relapsed a little bit, and then 2016 is when I... What are we into? 16. Yeah, okay, so it's been more than that now. Okay, because we're in 2020 now. Four years. So it started, yeah. Okay, interesting. I'm really bad with numbers, you guys. So, like, in this, I'm not... I mean, I'm great with math, but I mean, like, with remembering, like... <clears throat> How long? I always just throw out, like, numbers that are totally wrong, and I think they're right, but I'm like, oh, wait, that's not right. <laughs> so it's been more like four or five years now, because I had originally started, uh, yeah, in 2000, fifth, the end of 2015 was when I couldn't walk up the stairs anymore. So, yes, yeah, so it was the end of 2000. And then 2016, that whole year, I struggled, and I still kind of relapsed quite a few times. And then 2017 is when it ended. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, so then, so then, yeah, so three years of not being bulimic because 2016 and 15, I still went back and forth because in the beginning, um, it's a struggle and girls will want to go back to bulimia until you find a solution. And that's why I'm trying to help people by saying choose organics and then you don't have to go through all the processes that I went through um, of you know trial and error and just getting so frustrated and being so sick. So. Um, Anyways, um, what was I talking about before the but uh, da, 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 I was going to say one more thing, and I forgot, but... But when I talk about bulimia, you can also relate it, if you're not bulimic, to overeating, because it's the same thing. Um, bulimics overeat. So if you are struggling with overeating, then I, I can relate, because that is what bulimics do. They, I mean, I ate so much when, when I was bulimic. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So you get these... Uh, Bone spurts, calcium deposits grow, on especially where you've had injuries during the time if you are unhealthy, and they get so painful. But then as you get healthy, they start to come off, and we have like this jade tool, and you can scrape it, and we also have this TENS massagers. TENS massagers are really good, you guys. Look into those. TENS as in just T-E-N-S, TENS massagers. Um... You can get them, like, on eBay or Amazon. There's all different brands. We use, like, Avon. It's A-U-V-U-N. We used to use IQ Massager, but they're really expensive. Avon works really good. I don't know if that's how you say it. But um, you just, they're these pads, um, a little electrode pads. You put them on yourself, and then uh, they'll, like, they have, like, acupuncture thing, all different kinds of things for massage. But those are really good for if you have 
part without pain. So if you're struggling with pain, there's a good chance it's probably, um, like I said, a buildup of calcium that happened there because you're probably it's probably from an injury. That's the biggest thing I'm realizing where you get the pain is the calcium deposits because you'll feel. I mean, that's where you'll have like some sticking out, you know. And um, I didn't know what that was for the longest time. I was like, what is that? Because you think it's just bone, but it is. It's bone like on top of bone I was reading about the other day. And so if you can scrape that off for those tens of massagers help and um, getting healthy will eventually get all that off. And then you can be super duper healthy. Like each day I feel healthier and healthier uh, as I, you know, get some of the stuff off my joints. Because I thought I had arthritis. Because all of my joints hurt so bad every single day um, from the years of bulimia. Like, I was doing so much strain on my body um, that I thought I was just, you know, I thought I was just going to be like an old person because everything hurt. It was so painful. My hands, my hands would actually, like, um, uh, clench up like this where they'd be, like, stuck in a position Um, because just everything had gotten so, I don't even know, it was so messed up. So I'm telling you guys, it's important to eat right um, if you want to feel good. That's the bottom line. That's more important than anything else. Like I said, exercise, you can just do light exercise if you're eating right. Uh, As in walking, nunchucks, even this is exercise what I'm doing right now in the sense of just talking to you guys because I'm burning calories sitting here talking to you when I'm on a the diet that we're on anything you do burns calories because you're just you're in such a like efficient mode if that makes sense that you don't have to do tons of workout to actually see progress because you're just kind of like, you're, you're kind of just living so simply in a sense. Like what, if you want to know what we eat, if you're curious what we actually eat is I make, um, uh, organic beef burgers for every meal, pretty much. I'll tell you the variations we have, but primarily we eat organic beef burgers. So what I make is I make burgers with nothing else other than we do greens. So like, uh, collard greens or kale. I make uh, I, I, I I put cook those in water on the stove. I make a base of a collard green or kale and garlic and organic garlic, and I, I put that in a bowl. And then I make the patties, and that's all we get. You don't get burger buns or uh, tomatoes or um, mayonnaise or nothing like that. You don't get any condiments. You just have the burger, which I use rosemary and thyme and black uh, pepper for my seasoning. And oregano. Um, and then all organic. And then you put that on your... Uh, I have some photos. I'll post a photo on or on, my, on my website again of what it looks like when it's done. Or maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll do a cooking one, um, one these days. But um, And I put that on there. And then Jar Rich, you know, can have several patties he can eat all throughout the day. But sometimes he eats it all just in the one setting. And... We do that three times a day, but our variations are we also do um, uh, bone broth, so we get uh, organic uh, beef bones, and I put them in the crock pot and let those sit for eight hours, and then we have bone stew, which is delicious, and then we also do if we have any kind of stew meat for beef stew, and then um, recently since the shutdown, we've had to do a little bit more variety because they haven't always had beef, so uh, Jairish has been eating a little bit of um, wild tuna like the sushi, but just the, so you just get the wild tuna and you just cut that, no rice, like you're just eating the tuna part of sushi. And then um, we had to eat chicken a couple times um, because they just didn't have the beef, but I prefer beef always. Um, And then uh, we had some uh, uh, wild, wild uh, fish, so like wild salmon and stuff, but so if you can't get organics, if you're going for fish, go for wild. Wild is your best option. So anything you want to avoid when they're using any kind of these antibiotics and steroids and hormones and stuff. So that's what I'm saying. Go with the wild or organic is better. Um, but we pre- so we all we eat is the meat and some leafy greens and garlic. That's it. So there's no other condiments. There's no other ingredients. That's what we eat. And by eating that, we are constantly full. 
we are never hungry unless it's literally like time for a meal. And I mean, not even time for the next meal. Usually like if you missed a meal, you're going to be really hungry. But if it's the next meal, you'll be like, yeah, okay, sure, I can eat. Like you're not starving. Um, And uh, you feel fantastic. That's the big thing. And you lose weight like crazy. Like, you, you, it's hard to even keep weight on when you eat like that. I mean, it'll take a minute. You, you know, like, we started eating this way a couple of years back now. Like I said, we teeter-tottered. Um, I started scouring in uh, the end of 2015. All of 2016, I scoured the Internet trying to find stuff. And then all the way up until we lived in the cave, we were— in the cave, we had it pretty good, except for I hadn't figured out the caffeine yet, but we were doing organics, and that was in 2018. And then when we moved out of the cave is when I think we went to full, yeah, March 24th, uh, 2018 is, was my birthday. The next day, I cut out uh, caffeine. So 2018 is when we cut out caffeine, so we've been doing that for two years now. Two years, no caffeine, and that's when we saw really amazing results, and of course, no alcohol. We have not had alcohol since the last time I drank was, um, I drank for New Year's, listen to this, I drank for New Year's Eve when we lived in the cave because I had a client that wanted me to drink and I thought it would be uh, smart because we didn't have any money to do it, but I got so sick. Oh my gosh, it was the worst experience and that was the last time I ever drank and I will never drink again for any amount of money. <laughs> you cannot pay me to drink now. It, I just will not. It's so toxic to my system. I got so sick. It was awful. Um, I really get sick from alcohol now. I, I don't know why. It's like I used to be able to drink like a fish and now if I, I like instantly, just uh, just really bad. Um, I'm just not used to it anymore. So, um, that was really bad. That was in 2000, uh, oh, the, what well, was the end of 2017 to the, you know, it was the new year's for 2018. We were living in the cave, but, um, I highly recommend if you are struggling with alcohol, try to choose some weed is a really good other option. I was a huge alcoholic. I thought I would drink forever and I thought I would want to drink forever in the past when I had gotten sober. I still wanted to drink. Now I have no desire to drink, which is a really cool feeling. I never thought I would feel that. And I got that from smoking weed. Um, I don't know if I would, could have felt that without weed um, because I, I love my weed. I smoke weed every day. And it's very important to us, and it's for health. I have a medical card. Um, it actually helps me. I mean, I don't do it for entertainment, uh, although weed is fun. But sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's actually just healing me to where I am like feel sick after it. But it like it. You're like, okay, I know I'm getting better because when when you when you first do weed, you're just gonna laugh and you're gonna have a great time. And you know, but as you do it longer, you can really start to feel the healing parts of it. And sometimes you'll you know do a bong hit and you're like, oh my gosh, I can feel it's healing me. But this hurts right now because like, especially with me because I have all this chest pain. But it heals it. People think you shouldn't smoke weed if you have chest pain. No, actually, that's healing all of that garbage in your lungs. And uh, I never knew this is this is kind of a funny thing about me. I never knew how to uh, burp or um, haka lugi. So my burps would be just like this really silly little like it was just like you could barely hear it. It wasn't really like a burp. I I still don't burp. Uh, and but. Um, I didn't know how to hock a loogie. So I was, for years, having a buildup of phlegm because I didn't know how to get it out. And I'm just now kind of learning, but I'm so bad at it. And Jedi Rich laughs at me because I make so much noise when I try to do it because it's just, it's so bad, but it's healing me. But yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't know how to do those things. I also don't know how to whistle. <laughs> but um, anyways... So I, this is probably like the longest blog. I don't, Jai Rich just leaves the room and then I'm just kind of sitting here just rambling and I can literally talk forever. I don't know if you guys know that about me, but I, it, you could put me in a room and I can just talk forever. I also can sit in a room by myself forever. Like if we get in a fight, I go in my closet and I just sit there for hours. I don't care. <laughs> Jai Rich will be like, what are you doing in there? I don't care. I'll just lay on the, lay on the floor. I don't need a phone. I don't need anything. Um, I am so content, like, just to sit somewhere, uh, especially if I'm mad. I'll just sit forever. I just, I'll sit for hours in the closet um, until I feel like coming out <laughs> if I'm that mad. Uh, and, uh, 
but yeah, we were talking about that. So we really um, express ourselves. So we get in big fights, which is really good because then you're over it. Uh, when you don't get in big fights and you let it just keep kind of building and the irritations are growing, and especially right now if you're spending a lot of time with your family and you're not maybe confronting each other on things that are bothering, like, people can do things that are really irritating that if you just say, hey, that's kind of irritating, sometimes they can stop doing it because they just don't even realize it, you know what I mean? Now, other things, they might be like, fuck you, I'm going to do that. But, like, some little things, sometimes you can just mention it and someone's like, oh, I had no idea that was bothering you. Let me stop doing that, you know, and it can be pretty simple, but people are so worried or they uh, or they want people to like think of it on their own. They're like, I want them to just know I don't want them to do that. Well, no one knows what you want them to do. You got to tell them. Well, I just want them to like take out the trash because they just thought of it, not because I had to ask. <laughs> That will never, Jedi Rich will never take out the trash without me asking. I always have to ask, and I ask him, and he still forgets it. I usually take it out myself. But it's like, to think like, oh, I just wish he would think of it or something. Then I would know that he loved, no, that's what People are different. You know, some people show their love in different ways. Some people show it by actions. Maybe there's someone that does take out the trash, and that's the way they do. But then other things they do, or, so everyone has their little things that are annoying and the little things that they do that are nice but not everyone is the same so I'm someone that does things but I'm not the most affectionate person necessarily I can be affectionate but in my moments there's a lot of times I don't like people I'm like man get away from me and Dick will come out leave me alone um but I show my love by doing things always like I'm all like I I love cleaning I love cooking I love taking out the trash I love keeping the house nice and that's because that's just kind of the way I was raised. And so, but someone that doesn't know me can I can come off really brass to them because I'll be like, yeah, get away from me, you know. And um, so, if you just don't understand the way, you know, there's like, I hate to refer to books and stuff, but I remember my dad told me about this book that was called Love Languages, that was like, uh, that was talked about that people just have different ways of um, communicating. And some people show it with gifts. Some people show it with actions. Some people show it with affection, different ways. But it doesn't mean that person doesn't love you or doesn't care or whatever. So sometimes you just have to communicate um, to get on the same page about something and be like, hey, this really annoys me when you do this, but I like when you do this or whatever it may be, you know. Um, And, you know, me and Jed are rich spent... We have spent... Every day since we've been, I think there's only been one day we, like, we've only been, like, 24 hours, like, once in the time that we've been together. And we've been together since 2012. And that was because I got kind of kidnapped in Panama. <laughs> uh, I got, the guy locked me in a room for a day. Um, but anyway, that's a long story. But uh, that was the only time. And so... Um, he Jarvis called customs and everything, but he says long story. But we spend so much time together, so like this shutdown is like not that big a deal for us in that sense, like because we're like we're exactly the same as we always are. But a lot of people are now spending way more time than they're used to with their loved ones, and that can create a lot of anxiety and drama and fights and stuff. So just be aware of that. You might need to just communicate to each other, you know, to your kids, to your spouses, to whoever, your friends, your boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Because we now are spending close quarters and people can get at each other. And there's a lot of anxiety because people are stressed about what's going to happen with their finances, if they're going to get the virus, if they're going to die, all these things, you know, so that causes anxiety for people. But like I talked about in the beginning, this virus, you really should not be fearing that you're going to die. It's only if you were going to flu- die from the flu. If you thought getting the flu would kill you, then you should worry about this virus. But if you don't think the flu will kill you, then you shouldn't worry about this virus because it's the same thing. It's the same people that the flu normally kills or who are dying from this virus. Um, and that's the elderly, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to act like that's not a thing that the elderly are dying, but those are who always die from the flu. 
because their immune system generally, you know, uh, is lower and they start to have more health problems. Um, but I'm telling you, I firmly believe that this flu thing has been blown out of proportion. Um, you may not believe to the level of conspiracy that I think, but please know that the normal flu kills 50,000 people a year, and this one has already peaked, and it's only killed 15,000. And it, they already said we've already hit the peak. So it's, you know, like, it's going to be less deaths now. Um, and worldwide, the normal flu kill is like 650,000. And this one, I don't know what the new numbers were. I think the last I saw was... Gosh, I don't, I don't remember. By the way, everyone I don't who, say. Who, says, who says it's lame to have conspiracy theories... I mean, all a conspiracy is, we're just saying that... To two think people of... Came up with... A, two people talked about a plan. Mm -hmm. So to say, to suggest, like... The government doesn't have a plan. The government always has a plan, and two people always come together for a plan. That's all a conspiracy that, is, is people coming together and making a plan. <laughs> people have blown out of proportion what they think conspiracy theory is. Conspiracy is that two people got together and they made a plan. That's all a conspiracy is. We're saying that people got together and they realized, hey, we can blow this virus out of proportion and hopefully take down Trump this way. Because if you notice, it's the Democratic... Uh, politicians that are talking the most about it and the ones that have stopped their states the most. This is a Democratic state, and we've stopped more than any other state here in Vegas. I mean, he, Governor Sisolak, put additional days, even more than other states, on us just for what reason? I don't know, because you could say, oh, because of the virus, but then why is he allowing the Raiders Stadium to continue when a second worker tested positive? Two workers tested positive at the Raiders Stadium for the COVID virus, and they continue to work as normal. We were there yesterday. Was it yesterday? Two days ago. Two days ago. And um, they are working in close quarters. They walk together. They leave together. I mean, there's no regard. They're not even trying to do six feet apart, even when they're leaving. When they're, I mean, when they were leaving, they were packed in like sardines trying to get out the gate. There was... There's no, like, they're not taking they're not it seriously at all. We even talked to the guys. They were laughing when we asked about the virus. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I feel the same way. But here's the deal. Why is Governor Sislik allowing that if it's such a deadly virus that he's shutting down golf courses now because and everything and churches and all, all the show. everything, but then allows the Raiders Stadium when two workers have tested positive for because the COVID. It's because he's invested in the stadium. Yeah, so, so if you don't think your politicians have planned this, then answer me why he's allowing construction to continue. Why is construction essential? You tell me one good reason why construction can't wait a month. Tell me one good reason why construction can't wait a month if everything else had to wait besides health care and grocery stores and like things like that. I mean, so why is construction even in there? Which, don't get me wrong, I don't want him to stop construction. We don't need any more shutdowns here, believe you me. What I'm saying is open it back up because why are you allowing that if you're not allowing this? Does that make sense? Like, why are you allowing two workers to test positive over there and continue uh, the just work as progress? Here's the proof. Work is okay, look. Sometimes, normal. So, look, you don't have the evidence because we don't have access to, the, to, to, to talk about who's discussing what. Okay, why are you doing that? That's bad. I was trying to turn it down. So what, so what it is is, is if, you, if you're asking for what the proof is, she's describing it. It's, it's backwards of the puzzle. She's saying that, oh, my gosh, it's so deadly that you can't even golf together. That's how deadly this virus is. But then, on a project that Steve Sislak is personally invested in, okay, mm -hmm. he allows workers, 2,000 of them, to come in close contact every day and go home to their families. Every day. And, so, hold on, wait, wait. And, but listen to this. This is the uh, other thing. Well, my thing. Well, but my, not my only... punch is this. Is this. Is... He can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. But here's the thing. Not only... When you allow those workers to bring it home to their families, if there's workers testing positive, you're now allowing it to spread to everywhere else. Because all of those workers that came in contact with the worker that tested positive, if it's so deadly and so, you know, we can get it that easily, then all of those people then go to the grocery store, then spread it everywhere else again. So you're back to there's no quarantine occurring once well, you allow that. Well, grocery stores are now done. You can't do grocery store. Yeah. He did the thing where you can't, finally, 
he did where you can't do uh, self food serve service in the buffets and the grocery stores. Oh, you can't do okay, but you can still go in the grocery. You can still store. go and touch all the vegetables and touch everything and touch get all in there. the vegetables. Touch everything and in touch the store. everyone. And every cashier has pretty much come get in contact Uber, with every get person. Get Uber, go talk and to even them. if you're doing the self checkout, I just mean that the cashiers are there. So if it's really around. that Chico, so if it's really that deadly, you see, you just work backwards. Right. Where's the proof? See, the reason why he didn't shut that down was because Al Giant is. Those ones are mine. I have one pair of glasses. They're so nice. No, listen, I have one pair, and J.I. Rich has like 20, uh -huh. and I try to just save my one pair. It's so true. And he goes and finds my one pair. How do I find it? How I'm I like, you that? have like 20 other ones you could wear. How I do that? He's the kind of person that if you put something like exactly where you're like, okay, I'm going to move this out of his way. He will go exactly where you put it. Like, never fails. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this out of his way. And he'll be, like, way over somewhere else, you know. And, like, it had nothing to do with it. You're like, I'm going to move this over here so Jedi Ridge does not knock this over. And then he comes and he knocks the thing over. And he's like, why did you put it there? And you're like, oh, my God, I thought that was, like, the best spot. And how did you find that one spot? Or if, like, I tell him, don't step right there, he goes, where? And he'll step, like, right where you said to not step. You know, it's just this funny little thing about him. That's crazy. Is that not true, Jedi Ridge? It's very true. It's so true. Uh, it's so true. He's like a little kid. I'm like a little kid. He my little kid. I right, don't have exactly. a kid, so he that's my exactly. little kid. Hey, Chico, check it out. That's exactly what those are. You have to listen. We have to talk. They won't even allow people to gather to get together at church right now to talk about what's happening. Right, so now so you have you to talk have online. To guess. You have to conjecture. You have to have these conversations. Now, if you don't think it's queer that Steve Sisolak allows 2,000 workers to come face-to-face -face every single day, touching each other, you know, basically kissing each other when they're lifting things together, and going to the grocery store and shopping and touching everything in the mm -hmm. store and then getting in an Uber and talking to those guys spreading all over. If it's so deadly, then he's allowing all that to happen. Right, and people because are acting like that the reason why this your, is not... That's your proof now. That, that's your no, proof that listen, it's not deadly. Plus, everyone's recovering. Right, but people are also... Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. The numbers, they the, keep not showing... Like, people are not focusing on that. There's a bigger number of people that have recovered than have died. Way bigger number of people have recovered than have died. Like, substantially larger number of recoveries. And um, the thing is... If people are saying, oh, the only reason why there hasn't been as many deaths is because of this quarantine thing. For one thing, this quarantine thing has been a joke because the way they're doing it would not actually help. For one thing, they're instead, what they're doing is they're choosing everyone to uh, stay at home and then congregate in one place like a grocery store or a gas station or whatever. And they think that that will limit. If anything, you've made it where it will spread more because now everyone is, like, going to the same places. Like, everyone rushed to the grocery stores, you know what I mean? And they're still rushing to the grocery stores more than they ever would. So now you have, like, so many people in one packed spot where without that, everyone wouldn't have been rushing to the grocery stores. Like, when I used to go to the grocery store, there'd be no one in the middle of the day. Now it's packed every single time I go. So now, if anything, it's made it worse for a lot of people because now every time they go to the grocery store, they're packed in like sardines, and you're like, right, man. Okay, now here's the thing. You want to talk conspiracy theory? The government has two agendas, because without it, they don't exist. One, taxes. Two, war. Okay, they have to have something that you're afraid of that you need them to have a war against. Because we don't, we don't like war against people no more, because we realize that that's kind of stupid, they come up with stupid things like war on drugs, war on poverty, war on... Homeless people, war on whatever. Yeah, it's now illegal. Now it's a war on a virus. How the fuck do you call the National Guard in for the war on a virus? Oh, I know. That's, they made that's it how illegal. you know it's bullshit. Here in Vegas, uh, I think this is all karma because first they made it illegal to feed pigeons in Las Vegas in like 2017, I think it was. Um, and they made it legal to kill them. You can kill pigeons, but you can't feed them. And then in 2018, they made it illegal to be homeless in Las Vegas. You can get arrested for being homeless in Las Vegas. So they made these two horrible laws, and then they're wondering why, like, karma is biting them in the ass from the universe because Vegas is done. Like, it'll become something, but, I mean, what we know of it now is done. Like, most of these casinos are going to change. They're either going to change owners or close. Um they're, you know, a lot of them are not going to open back up. They'll probably have to sell, and then someone else will. They'll open eventually, probably, you know, all of them, but it's going to be slow. And I think a lot of them are going to change hands for sure because um, a lot of these guys are going to have to sell 
because they've lost so much money during the shutdown. So, like, if they have a couple properties, they'll have to sell some of them. And that's already been that was already happening before because ever since the Mandalay Bay incident, Vegas has not done as well. It was just starting to kind of recover, and then this happened. Um, but this year was the best year we've had since uh, the Mandalay Bay because the first um, that happened in 2017 and 2018 and 19 were not very good years for Vegas. They were pretty slow. Uh, and then this year was finally starting to pick up. It was I was I was really excited when I went to the casinos. They were full again. It was really nice. And then of course Governor Sisolak decided to shut down all of Las Vegas. So thank you Governor Sisolak for destroying Las Vegas. So he can take the credit for destroying Las Vegas because this was unnecessary. Can you tell me it's the virus? Then why is the Raiders Stadium still being built when two workers have tested positive, Governor Sisolak? So that's not the truth. It is not for the virus. It is, I firmly believe, to sabotage Trump because he already, they couldn't impeach him. We know how many people were going to try to impeach him. They couldn't impeach him. So now he was boasting about an amazing economy. Um, and now, <laughs> commies in the toilet. So they're hoping that people won't vote for him this year, that they'll blame it on him. But I think, if anything, you should blame it on the Democrats because this is BS. But, like I said, I don't vote. So, and I don't think any of the people are good candidates this year <laughs> or ever. I don't think they've been good candidates probably for the last 20 years or longer. Maybe way back. Probably the founding fathers were good presidents. But any of these Dr. current Drew ones. Dr. Drew said only 22,000, less than 20,000 yeah. people would die. Dr. Yeah. Drew had said in the beginning that this was a normal flu virus that they were blowing out of proportion and that let only about 20,000 would die from it. Right now we're less only at 20, less than we're only at fifteen thousand and it's already it's already peaked. So peak. it's gonna go it passed the peak. So it's gonna start the numbers will start to decline like it won't be as rapidly growing. So he was pretty right and um he might be exactly right. We'll see when the numbers end. But here's the deal. He oh, reneged on this. Yeah, yeah like, he's reneged on this because I'm telling you, this is a political move. So if you look, all the celebrities are oh, self isolate, oh do this, do that. Oh, and it's all the celebs that were Democrats, if you notice, um, the ones that are really jumping on telling you to, that it's so deadly and so scary and stay home and to, easy for them to say when they make millions of dollars. But all of us who can't stay home when we have no money, uh, yeah, no one is accounting for the poor people. This is going to affect the poor more than we've seen in right. So Dr. Drew said hundreds all, of years. Dr. Drew said all that, and then he backed off once he realized it was a political play to yeah. think Trump. Yeah, once he realized it was a political play. Because nothing has changed. His numbers are still exactly right. He said less than 20,000. It's still less than 20,000 and still less than any. But he's like, oh, I was wrong. Really? Why were you wrong? Because you're exactly in line of what you said. So the fact that he reneged on what he said tells me it's a political stunt, too, because what he said is still true. He said yeah, it was a normal flu yeah. virus and that it'd be less than 20,000. The numbers were right. The numbers were right, and now he's saying he was wrong. Why would you say you were wrong when you were right? Well, now they're going to say this. It's because of all of our precautions. Yeah, they're saying the precautions, but like I said, the However, precautions are BS. If you have everyone quarantined at home and then send everyone to the same grocery store where they're in contact with the same cashiers, the same machines, whether you do self-checkout, you're using the same machine, I don't care if they clean it off, everyone's in contact, all of the germs in the air, everything going on, you put your stupid mask, whatever, that's not going to stop you from getting a virus from the person next to you in the grocery store. So, if it was that deadly, we'd all have it by now because well, we all went, if you went to a grocery store. Well, and then here's the other proof. Or anyone in your family went to a here's grocery store. Here's the other store. proof. It was, it was in Australia first. That's where Tom Hanks, his wife, and members of Duran Duran got it. And they're all fine. They're all fine. And those guys are how old? They're from the 80s. Yeah, so they're like in their 60s and they're fine. And they're even, they've said they were fine, but then they're still saying to self quarantine. It makes no sense. They recovered and they're doing fine and then they're still saying. So you guys and know what really they're doing is that they're misrepresenting the numbers because mm -hmm. anybody who has the virus that was dying, anyways. They're, yeah, that's why I said earlier. Oh, say it again. What they're doing is anyone that gets the virus, let's say, you, you know, you already are terminal, but then you get the virus. They're saying the virus is the reason for their death when it might not even be. So, like, they're just anyone that got the virus that they tested positive and then they die from any means, even a car accident. And they they're saying that, it's right. the virus because they, they're saying they have the virus. if they had the virus at any point, let's even say like if Tom Hanks dies right now, even though he's recovered, they're going to say it was the virus.
even though he recovered. So that's what they're doing. Like anyone that's recovered and then they die in any other means, they're counting it as a COVID death because they had it at one point. Mm -hmm. So if you have the virus, the point is they're misusing the numbers. Misusing the numbers. And and this is true. And I know this is true because, because people have said that. They said, now... It's like they actually argued with the doctors. They're like, why are you counting this as that? When I was Yeah, no, they're, 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 this is not, we didn't come up with this. This is what's coming out, that they're realizing that people are fudging the numbers, that they're trying to make this into something more. So even 15,000 is an extreme number. That's so anyways, a fudged still, number. Yeah, so it's 15,000 plus. Fudged number. Also, so it's less than 15,000. Also, but people are getting it. And the thing is, it's spread, if people have it here, they aren't dying. No, they're just getting the flu. It's the flu, that's, you guys. That's our evidence, guys. Look, two people got it. A guy got it on March 20th at Al Giant Stadium. On March 20th. Today is April 9th. It's four weeks. That guy's still alive. He's back at work now, just so you know. Another guy tested positive They on April 1st. He's at home now, but he'll self-quarantine until he feels better. He'll be back at work. There's our evidence that it's not deadly so quit asking us where the proof is. You guys just need to stop watching TV where they, all they do is they just focus on the All you have to do extreme. is look at the numbers. Listen to this. Look at the numbers. They say this is the worst virus and the most deadly virus, but where are the numbers that line up with that? 15,000 people in the U.S. only, and that's an extreme number. Tell me how that is the most deadly virus when normally the flu virus kills 50,000. We've already hit the peak, so we're going down from here. So it's not going to hit 50,000, you guys. And the thing is, is that is that is that the infection rate was so low because we contained it. None of us are going to get the flu this year. Notice that? No one got the flu this year. No one even got the regular right, flu. Right, that's great. great. So we contained it. So right. we don't get the flu. This is the regular flu. That's what I'm saying. This, this is, is the, the regular, regular flu. flu virus that they would normally inoculate that they're bringing up and they're trying to say, look, John Prine died from COVID. You guys, this is the normal flu. John Prine was very, very old. And it was also, he recovered. He just gotten over cancer. Treatment. And he had cancer. He was Twice. like in remission. <laughs> so he did not have a healthy immune system. He's a he's a singer that just died. That they're yeah, he's 73 something years he's old. He's 70 Everyone something like years old. old. These are people that would have died if they caught the normal flu. No, it, that's what I've been trying to tell everyone is well, if you, have if to, you new people in the fear room. that you can get die from the flu then you will die from this covid virus if you think you will live from the flu then you will live from this covid virus it's as simple as that like if the flu <coughs> doesn't kill you then the covid virus won't either and the fact is every year a new strain comes out and we have to get inoculated or Every you, year this happens. They're just exaggerating it this year. They're not even. They're just focusing on like this thing and saying, and like, oh my gosh, it's gone crazy. It started out. It was a Chinese hoax to to, to go after Trump. And then the Dems jumped on it to fucking bring down everything. Yeah, because like I said, the Chinese were the first to say, "Hold oh, this deadly virus," which they're all recovered now, and they're not even. They're laughing. They're laughing. They, and then they're full, full, Trump full. said, "No, the Chinese. This is a hoax." Remember, Trump was saying that in the beginning, and then the Dems started saying that he was wrong and that he wasn't taken seriously and so they started to jump on it because first the chinese wanted to attack us with the best way to attack us now is just with social media and make lies you don't have to actually do real warfare anymore you just make a lie and look at what we did to ourselves and it's not a lie there's a virus but they exaggerated the uh seriousness of the virus they said it was so deadly and stuff in china they're back to normal and they're fine so so those are the uh, and then the Democrats here jumped on it. If you notice, all the celebrities immediately in L.A. were like, self-quarantine, self-quarantine. Uh, yeah, I was like, Once I saw Lady Gaga and Joe Biden get up there talking about how deadly the virus was. I know. And like all this crap, and like Miley Cyrus and all these celebs hey. are like jumping on this. Like Miley Cyrus now has an Instagram show just about this self-quarantine thing. Like talk about like capitalizing while other people are like struggling. She's getting paid um, oh, that's to a, promote. Hey, this. Check this out, though. But yesterday, good point, man. Good point, man, City. Uh, yesterday, Trump decided to do two things. One, he announces that we're going to start, this is a great idea, we're going to start mining for minerals on the moon. Number two, he's going to, uh, he's considering pardoning the Tiger King. The Tiger <gasps> Oh, is he still in prison? I haven't finished right, that right, show. Right, right, right. Oh, I like that guy. Right, so, so Trump is, is saying... He's still in prison? Well, well... The, Trump's son really likes the Tiger King. I, I like that show. I just started. I didn't know he was still in prison. I didn't yeah, know he's that. He's in prison. We haven't even found out what he went to Yeah, do. I, I, I hadn't got to that point yet. I hadn't got to that point yet. We, we only watched like two episodes. He is hilarious. I love that guy. He's so nice, too. And that bitch, man, that's like the some of these Raider Nation people that come at us. Like, uh, Beer Me. Beer Me reminds me of... Um, 
of that uh, nasty bitch on uh, Tiger. What's that lady? What's her name? Carol or something that want, runs the um, the Big Cat Foundation that tries to bring down the Tiger King. She's a nasty bitch. That's how some of these Raider Nation people are. There's some really nasty Raider Nation people. There's this one girl. Her thing is Beer Me on Twitter. She's the nastiest thing. She comes at me all the time and just says rude, nasty stuff. She's just so jealous. Because what happens is girls are actually sexually attracted to each other. And when there's a pretty girl, they want to attack another pretty girl because they're actually just turned on. But they are so sexually repressed that they go, oh, I hate you. uh, She calls me too thin and all this stuff and tells me to eat. and I'm like, whatever, girl. You don't even know my story. I mean, I talk all about nutrition, you guys. So when you come at me and call me anorexic and stuff, it's just silly because... I've already told you guys my whole story. Nutrition is so important to me. I'm not anorexic. I have dealt with so many eating disorders, and now I have found the way to eat super healthy, and I try to um, teach other people so that you guys don't have to struggle the way I did. So then when people come at me and just call me anorexic and uh, skeleton and skeletor and all this stuff, I get all this stuff online. For one thing, it's uh, not—I don't know why you can call people skinny but not call them fat. How is that any different? How can you call me a skeleton, but I can't call you fat? That How is our society allowed? Oh, that's fine because you're thin, so it, it shouldn't hurt your feelings. Actually, it is rude when because I don't want to be looking like a skeleton. That would not be something I want. So when you call me that, that's very rude. So uh, just as rude as it would be for me to call you a fat ass. You know what I mean? So um, we are in the society where, like, if people are thin, then we can call them whatever we want and that they should be okay with that. But if they're fat, don't say a thing. Where here's the issue. You can be attractive and be fat. That's not the thing. But being fat is unhealthy. And that is the bottom line. And we need to stop acting like it is healthy to be fat. And that is not the case. It is not healthy to be fat. You will always feel better if you are at the weight that your body was supposed to be, which everyone is different. Everyone has a different weight, what that is. So I'm not saying you'd be the same size as someone else, but your size, whatever that size is. Um, I don't know. You usually know what your number is that you like, where you're like, I'm six foot and I like to be 250 pounds or, you know, whatever the number is that you like. Um, girls, they go, I'm 5'6", I'm I like to be 120 pounds or whatever. You know, they, they, they think this, whatever that is. Uh, is different for everyone because, you know, we all have different bone sizes and body structures and things. But whatever yours is, you know it. You know it in your head, what you like to be. It might not be a number. It might be how you look, how you feel. Um, That is your healthy weight. And anything beyond that starts to become unhealthy. And as much as we can say it's beautiful, you can say, oh, you know, it's a try. I'm not saying it's uh, ugly, but I'm saying it's unhealthy. And the more someone becomes unhealthy, the less they find themselves attractive. So they end up not being as attractive only because of the way they carry themselves. Because the less you feel attractive, the less you represent attractiveness in a sense. Like if you, you, what comes out is how you feel on the inside. So as people start to gain weight and not feel good about themselves, then they don't even show a good side of themselves anymore. They just kind of mope around. You know what I mean? Well, then people tend to not find you as attractive. And so it's like this vicious cycle. When you feel good, you'll immediately start to look better, lighten up. People will find you more attractive no matter what your weight is because you'll be alive again. And then usually the best way to feel good is by eating right. If you have another way that makes you feel great and you have no problem, then don't worry. If you're, not, if you're feeling great, don't listen to anything I'm saying. You don't need to listen to me. If you love your weight, you love your life, and you have nothing you need to work on, don't listen to me. You are evolved. Good on you. Go to another channel. This is for the other people. But if you feel you don't like your weight, you're not happy, you wake up and you're struggling with every day you don't know what to eat, you're constantly feeling hungry, Every minute you're thinking about food, I've been there, you guys. Bulimics obsess about food 24-7 from the time they wake up while they're sleeping, they're dreaming about food. Get up, first thing they think is usually coffee, that's what I went for, and then just the first thing I can get to eat usually was a beverage because that would be the easiest quick sugar because 
bulimics are highly addicted to sugar as long as well as anyone that's overweight is highly addicted to sugar. Um, if you are obese, you're addicted to sugar big time. And like I said, it's not your fault. It's not a self-control thing. It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's that sugar you, literally turns off the sensor in your brain to tell you you're full. So as soon as you start eating sugary things, which is pretty much everything now, they add sugar to pretty much everything unless you're doing, like I said, organic real food and food from the earth. Not just organics in the sense of they wrote on the package organics. I mean real food, like fruits, veggies, animal meat. Not fake food, not stuff that they make in a lab, not these health bars that they made in a lab, not potato chips, not pretzels, not, you know, not these things that are not even like real food, that they, that, that, those foods didn't exist. What you want to think is food that existed from the beginning of time, food from the earth. Not once we started making things. Those are what you want to avoid. What you want is the real food. So, like, and organics is food the way it used to be. So it's when they didn't put steroids and hormones and try to make the food bigger than it needed to be. See, what happens is they wanted to make more food and make it bigger and last longer. And so what they did with the fruit is they found ways to make it bigger and to last longer. So that's why they add all kinds of hormones and steroids and things. That's why... Um, now fresh fruit can last so long when it's the conventional. If you buy organics, it doesn't last as long because that's one of the things. That's why they wanted food to last longer. So that's why organics are expensive too because they don't last as long. When you actually get the fruits and veggies, they will go bad if you don't eat them. Whereas nowadays you can have fruits and veggies for a long time when they're conventional. They'll just stay and they'll stay like bright, like an apple will stay like a bright apple. You're like, how does that stay that way for so long? That doesn't seem right. Um, and that isn't right because they've been messing with the genetics of the food. That's what uh, GMOs are, is genetically modified organisms. So that's what you want to avoid is when they've genetically modified these things because what happens is your body doesn't truly know what that is. Because your body knows stuff from this earth because we're from this earth. If we were from another planet, we'd know stuff from that planet. Um, but we know from this planet so the stuff that's grown from this earth is what you want to consume, uh, including animals. And that's why, you know, the vegans are all, uh, all on that kick to don't eat animals. But I'm telling you, the vegan diet will make you the heaviest. Because the problem with the vegan diet is it's a very high sugar diet. And it's also based usually on a lot of artificial things. The only time you can do a vegan diet and be really healthy is if you were doing all raw, um, like, but it would still be a very high sugar diet. But you could probably do it, but I, it'd still be high on the sugar. But if you were doing this like raw fruits and veggies and, um, and nuts and uh, stuff. But the problem is you still wouldn't be very thin because those are very high in sugar. But it'd be better than most of these vegan options. Most of these vegan options, people are just literally, everything is vegan now. So they go and they buy TV dinners that are vegan or they buy um, uh, uh, fast food that's vegan. That's not uh, healthy. Um like I said, raw would be pretty healthy, but that's still high sugar. And you always want to keep your sugar low if you want to lose weight. That's the thing that makes you lose weight the most is the sugar content and the percentage of sugar to protein. So you want to have 60% be protein of your diet, 20% be from carbs and not even just from sugar. I mean, all carbs and then um, 20% fat. And when I say sugar, I mean like veggies have sugar everything breaks down to sugar so 30 grams is all that you really need for the day that's as much as your body can process any more than that it stores as fat so if you eat more than 30 grams a day it's just being stored as fat and that's why you're getting fat um and 30 grams is a very very small amount of, uh, of sugar and that's coming from anything like from carbs and stuff 30 grams of carbs but i mean did i say 30 20 the 30 30, 30, 30. Okay, your battery's about to run. Okay, all right, you guys. I, I seriously, this. I, I told you. Well, I was, earlier I said you weren't in the room. I should have stopped like an hour ago. Good job, good job. Wow, how long was that? Right, you're gonna have to upload this one yourself. Shit, please. how wow. long was it? Two hours. Oh shit! I said an hour. I was joking about an hour ago. I really did say an hour ago. Where's Jedi Rich? I need to end How's this. How's your broadcasting experience? Five. Five. I really enjoy it. When I don't see them, I have a great time. <laughs> it's always fine for me. I don't see what they're saying. You should answer it because you actually saw What was going on? Was there a lot of viewers? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
bring it. Two hours? Shit. Oh, God, my knee fell. Sleep. God damn. your stats 4500 and you already have a thousand replays you already got a thousand replays how does that happen like because once you turn off then everybody jumps on a lot of people because they didn't catch the beginning Like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day yo. I'm more time than a roly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out.